autumn is just around the corner. And I don't know about you, but I am ready to add some cozy seasonal touches to my home. And I think the dark academia aesthetic is perfect for this time of year because it's all about moody colors, rich textures, and old world charm. So today I'll be sharing several easy DIY projects that can be used year round, but are perfect for fall. So if you're ready to add a little autumn ambiance to your decor, let's get started. In the past, some viewers have commented on the book stand in my library. So I thought with the dark academia theme of today's video, it was the perfect opportunity to share an idea for making a cheap and easy book or dictionary stand. I started with a large wood candle stand with a split wood round on top. I hammered off the wood round and then pulled out the staples that had held it in place. I set my miter saw to a 30 degree angle and sliced off the top few inches of the candle stand. If you don't have a miter saw, a hand saw and miter box would work just as well. The wood split just a bit, but it won't be noticeable once I'm done. Next, I removed the hardware from an old cabinet door that I bought at the Habitat ReStore for $1. I marked the center of the back side and sanded a spot where I would attach the candle stand. Before putting the two parts together, I went ahead and filled the screw holes with some wood filler. I also cut a scrap piece of trim to fit across the bottom of the door. This would create a ledge to keep the book from sliding off. To create better adhesion, I lightly sanded both pieces where they would be joined together and then adhered them with wood glue and a few brad nails. I added wood glue to the angle cut on the candle stand and placed it on the center of the back side of the door. And then I added one brad nail from the back side to hold it in place so that I could flip the door over and add additional brad nails from the top side. After the wood glue was fully dry, I gave the door a medium sanding, removing the top layer of stain, but not sanding down to the bare wood. I just wanted the wood to have some grip so that I could restain it. I liked the dark wood of the candle stand and wanted to replicate that. So I brushed some black latex paint on the door and then immediately wiped it off. Next, I applied a coat of dark walnut stain and I let that soak into the door for about five minutes before wiping away the excess. It dried lighter than I hoped, but no one will notice once a book is lying there. I had recently replaced some outdoor lights on the back and side of our home. The old lanterns were in bad shape and most people would have thrown them away, but I thought they would make for some interesting indoor decor. To remove the wall mount and light socket, I needed to remove a nut that was on the inside of the lantern. After struggling for several minutes, I decided to just hammer off the wall mount and then I was able to access the nut from the outside. I pulled a thrifted wood wall sconce from my stash and again I grabbed my hammer, this time to remove the little shelf. Then I pulled out the brad nails that had held the shelf in place. I flipped the shelf over and applied some antiquing wax to the back side to give it a cleaner, more finished appearance. I just brushed it on with an old paintbrush and wiped off the excess with a paper towel. I arranged the lantern upside down on the wall plaque and drilled a hole through the back side of the lantern and into the wood. Then I attached a screw. 
This held the lantern in place so that I could flip it over and add additional screws through the back side. I just love how dark and moody this sconce looks. I recently thrifted a few vintage metal 8x10 frames. I remember having these in my home as a child. And if you love these old frames, please don't be mad at me. But I removed the glass and backing and then I ripped off the easel and removed the bolts that held it in place. Then I put the backing into the frame with the velvet side facing forward. Since I didn't return the glass, I added some extra cardboard to the back to hold everything in place. Next, I cut a poem from a book and used glue stick to adhere it to a piece of cereal box cardboard. To make it appear sewed on, I stitched around the four edges of the poem. However, I just attached it to the velvet with hot glue. The metal hanging ring was just above the poem, so I tied on a bow with a piece of black velvet ribbon. dark academia decor, you see a lot of shelves and cabinetry, so I thought I'd try turning this thrifted doll crib into a display shelf. I started by cutting off the legs to create an even backside so that it could be hung on a wall. Then I removed the dowel rods from the long sides since they were mostly all broken anyway. The ends of the dowel rods had been glued in place, so I had to saw them even with the support bars and then sand them smooth. I needed to add support bars to hold a shelf across the middle of the crib. Unfortunately, the legs I had cut off just weren't quite long enough, so I found a wood scrap that was about the same size as the other support bars, and I cut two pieces to fit and then attached them with wood glue and brad nails. Next, I found an old wood shelf in my wood pile and cut it into two pieces to span across the bottom of the crib and across the middle sidebars. However, before attaching the shelves, I decided to cover the back wall of the crib with a piece of peel and stick wallpaper, but a piece of pretty wrapping paper would also have worked. Once my wallpaper was attached, I used wood glue to adhere the shelves. When working with wood glue, be sure to wipe away any drips or runs right away because once that glue dries, it is nearly impossible to remove. Because the bottom of the crib was not level, there was a bit of a gap at the back of each of the shelves. To fill it in, I just glued a small strip of wood along the back edge of the shelf. I still had those broken dowel rods that I had removed, and since they had gone lengthwise, I was able to cut them down and glue them in place to add some extra detail along the sides. Since I had multiple wood tones, I decided to paint all the wood that was not original to the crib, so I mixed up some black latex paint with a little salt wash. The salt wash gives the paint a little extra grip and texture.
bookends are another way to add a dark and moody touch to your decor. I thrifted these two ceramic wall shelves that resembled ornate corbels. First, I removed the hanging hardware. Then, for an unexpected embellishment, I pulled out these plastic birds that were sent to me by a sweet viewer. First, I sprayed them with Zinsser Primer, and I let it dry, and then I brushed on a coat of that salt wash black latex paint mixture. Then I adhered one of the birds to the side of each of the ceramic corbels using Gorilla Glue. I let the glue dry overnight, and the next day I gave everything a coat of the black paint mixture. The black paint really needed some depth. So once the paint was dry, I applied a heavy coat of antiquing wax, only lightly dabbing away any excess wax. To create some autumn themed wall art, I primed and painted two oval plastic picture frames with that same black paint salt wash mixture. I think I've always been attracted to the dark moody vibes of Halloween decor, but I don't want skeletons or spiders in my home. But now blackbirds, that's a different story. So I downloaded two high-resolution crow images from the Audubon Society website and printed them out to fit inside my oval frames. I had one of the three flat plastic birds left, so I glued it to one of the frames using Gorilla Glue. Then, for extra durability, I filled the gap between the bird and the frame with some super glue. Amber bottles and jars are a popular autumn accessory, but they can be pricey. To make this A1 bottle look like something other than a steak sauce container, I removed the label and plastic lid. Then I used the Resizer app to make a vintage label longer and skinnier than its original size. I printed it out and decoupaged it to the side of the bottle. The label looked a little too new and clean, so I brushed some antiquing wax over it. To disguise the threading for the lid, I glued a small piece of ribbon around the bottle top and tied a piece of twine around it. I found this amber jug at an estate sale for a few dollars. I thought I would be able to scrape off the wording like you've seen me do many times in the past. But, for some reason, this time, the paint would not budge. Since there was writing on both the front and back sides, I decided to decoupage brown craft paper around the jug to disguise it. Once it was covered, I began applying antiquing wax. But then I immediately realized that I had forgotten to wrinkle up the craft paper before decoupaging it. And so I wouldn't get that leathery appearance I was going for. So I tore up some more craft paper, wrinkled it up, and then decoupaged the wrinkled paper on top of my first layer. Then I applied the antiquing wax. You probably already know this about me, but I love vintage labels. So I printed out an interesting one with two black cats and decoupaged it to the front of the jug over the craft paper. 
And like I had done with the A1 bottle label, I brushed antiquing wax over it to give it a more aged appearance. easy way to create some academia-themed flowers is to cut out circles from book pages. It doesn't matter if the circle is perfect or not. Then cut a spiral into the circle, going around the circle a few times until you reach the center. Leave a small circle of paper at the end of the spiral. Starting with the outside edge, begin rolling up the paper with your fingers. Keep rolling until you reach the circle at the end. For larger flowers, let your spiral unwind a bit. Then put a drop of hot glue in the center of that circle and push it against the base of your wound up spiral. Then twist the end of a piece of thick florist wire into a circle and hot glue that circle to the base of your paper flower. Trim the wire to your desired length. If you want to give your flowers a more aged appearance, you can dip them into a cup of coffee or tea and then just let the paper dry. Here's an idea for adding a scholarly touch to a thrift store wreath. Just tear out several pages from an old book and then tear those pages in half to make them smaller. Roll each piece of paper into a tiny scroll and secure the edge with glue stick. After you've made a few rolls, tie them together with twine in bunches of two, three, or four rolls. Then use the twine to tie the paper rolls to your wreath. After I attached several paper bundles, I also added a few small branches from my yard, sliding them under the twine. Then I added some berries pulled from a thrift store arrangement. I cut the berries into smaller sections and used a little florist wire to attach them to the wreath. decor is popular year-around, but it's especially appropriate during the autumn months. I wanted to make my ceramic owl really stand out, so I began creating a pedestal using two old candlesticks I found in my stash. First, I sanded the areas where they would be glued together, and then I used Gorilla Glue and a bit of hot glue to adhere them together. Next, I sprayed the pedestal with a coat of Zinsser Primer. When the primer was dry, I brushed on a coat of, you guessed it, some more of that black paint salt wash mixture. I also used this paint to paint my ceramic owl, an old thrift store find that has been painted every color of the rainbow over the years. Once the paint was dry, I used Gorilla Glue to attach the owl to the top of the pedestal. Then I filled in the seam with some caulk. This unifies the two pieces and adds stability to the connection. I let the caulk dry for about 15 minutes and then painted over it. To add dimension to the matte black paint, I applied a heavy coat of antiquing wax to the entire piece and lightly dabbed away the excess. However, it was still looking too flat in my opinion, so I pulled out some gold wax 
and just lightly brushed it on to add some highlights and contrast. Okay, stick with me here. Then I applied another coat of antiquing wax to tone down the gold wax. Finally, perfection. Please let me know if, like me, you are loving dark academia decor right now. Well, that's all for today. Thank you so very much for watching. Take care and hope to see you next week. Thank you.